Incredible. But We've been looking we forward to this. Don't really understand okay. why you're being so hateful. Welcome back to Morning Joe at 32 past the hour. We have been talking a lot about the emotional documentary, The Hunting Ground, that explores how colleges handle sexual assault, especially when it comes to its star athletes. Erica Kinsman, former Florida State student who accused football star Jameis Winston of raping her in 2012, breaks her silence in the film, talking about, talking at length about her version of events. Um, I went to see my victim's advocate, and in that meeting, we were just talking. She was like, we just want to let you know, like, there's another victim from him. It's my pleasure to announce the 2013 Heisman Memorial Trophy winner, Jameis Winston, Florida State University. Is it hard for you to believe that this has all happened? I kind of just want to know, like, why me? Doesn't really make sense. He won the Heisman Trophy. And the sad thing about that is that the world of college football didn't hold him accountable for the kind of person he is off the field. Joining us now, Amy Ziering, the film's producer. And Amy, um, thank you for being on the show. Um, this entire work that you've done, The Hunting Ground, is amazing. This part about Jameis Winston, I watched it with my daughter. She's getting ready to go to college, and I thought it would be something we could talk about. And, and when it got to that story, she kept looking for the justice that was going to happen at the end, you know, the way usually TV right. shows end. Right. And she seemed almost dumbfounded that it never happened. Um, yeah. And the way you set up the story and the wor work you've done, is there any question you're in your mind as to the conclusion? No, there's absolutely no question in our minds as to the conclusion. Um, you know, we thoroughly did our own investigation and read all the documents and, you know, we're completely convinced that everything we show in the film is 100% accurate. That. What happened? Um, if, if we start with the contention that this young girl was raped on a bathroom floor and went to the ER and did a rape kit, what happened after that? Because it seems like, as Joe pointed out the other day, she did everything right. Yeah, and she called 911 right after, and there's a recording of that call and reported the crime. And yet, you know, uh, clearly something did not go right in terms of the investigation. Um, and, and clearly that there was a desire to keep certain protections in place for the college athletes. A desire on what level? On every level? You know, we found that the cover-up was quite extensive and that the investigation was really botched and not thorough and that clearly there was a desire to protect this person because they were critical to the, to the team. Uh, you, you say uh, a cover-up. In, in what way? Uh, the film clearly shows the ways in which this was not thoroughly and properly looked into the way you would any other crime. I mean, you know, interviews were not done. The suspect was not apprehended and questioned immediately. Um, many, many instances of clear, you know, miss, miss, uh, the, 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 the police and the school did not do the proper types of investigations one would normally do with this type of crime. That was absolutely clear. You know, we, we also saw parts of the, the film very disturbing, that, and it was certainly disturbing for this young woman who described how she was pushed down on the floor and her face was shoved into a bathroom floor while she was being raped. Um, and even the state's attorney who let Jameis Winston avoid trial said he knew something very bad happened that night. Um, but but you, you go through all of this process and you actually, despite the fact that information was out there, you have other parts of it where there are female FSU fans who were calling her extraordinarily bad names and it reminds us of after Ray Rice was shown beating up his wife, you had women in Baltimore wearing a Ray Rice jersey immediately after. It's, it's kind of, it was dumbfounding to us to watch your documentary and see this behavior. 
Yeah, it's very sad and it's part of our culture, right? We don't want to believe bad news about our heroes. And, you know, we really need to change that because unfortunately that kind of veneration and adoration of, of people that might be talented in one area should not extend to giving them a hall pass for any other behaviors they might have off the field. All right, we want to show a, another clip from the film. This is the former assistant dean of students at UNC Chapel Hill, Melinda Manning, in the film um, saying that schools actually discouraged students from taking rape reports to the police to avoid embarrassing public records about assaults. Take a look. So in your time at UNC, how, how many students came to you and said they've been assaulted? Um, yeah, it's hard, to put a number, it's hard to put a number on it, so at least 100. And out of the 100, how many of the perpetrators were removed from campus? From what I remember, no one was expelled during that time. So these guys could just get away with it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And people could commit it repeatedly. Also joining us, Kirby Dick, who uh, wrote and directed the film as well. Kirby, thank you for joining us. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say after hearing that interview. Well, and it, that's the reality. It, and it is. It's bad PR. Uh, girls come to, young women come to administrators and say, I've been raped. And in this film, you have examples of administrators who should be there to protect, discouraging because it's bad press. Yeah, we, we saw that again and again across schools across the country, that uh, schools were more concerned about their reputation, more concerned about their donations than they were about pr uh, the safety of their own students. And th that's one of the reasons we made this film, because we re really wanted the public to know that this is going on really at campuses across the country. John Heilman. Right, and, and guys, there's, there's clearly, you know, in the, in the, in the specific instance, there's a, a problem with, obviously, with the power of athletic departments in, at universities that uh, want to protect their players and the revenue that those players bring and all that. But you're actually talking about a broader, more widespread phenomenon that I think you're saying you think is a systematic problem throughout the university culture across the country. Is that right? That is correct. I mean, I, obviously, we hear a lot about the cases involving athletics because they're the high-profile cases. But in fact, um, it's not just athletes by any means. It's, it's, you know, at schools across the country, whether they're a small liberal arts school, whether they're an Ivy League school, uh, all those schools we saw time and again that they were more interested in their reputation than in protecting the safety of their own students. Kirby, can you uh, tell us, uh, we were talking about Jameis Winston's case, obviously one of the most high-profile. Sure. Uh, can you talk about as you, you started writing this and, and, and digging into it, what the most shocking part of that story was? Well, I think initially the most shocking part was how the investigation was mishandled. I mean, uh, the uh, state prosecutor said that he probably could have gotten the information he needed to determine if a crime had happened within 24 hours, and the Tallahassee Police Department did not do that. Um, it took them months and months, really, to even begin to get information. By then, most of the leads were, were really cold. So, And why, that, why, why, did it, why did it take them months and months after a young woman reported being raped, went to the hospital, called 911, went there that night, had her parents drive up that night, lie in bed with her and hug her in bed. I, I mean, it, it's not like she sat there and said, oh, this guy's a big star three weeks later. And then, you know, right. it, 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 that night in real time, she did everything we would tell our daughters to do. Yes. How yes. could the Tallahassee police not move on this? Well, that's our question. I mean, uh, and that's a question of people across the country. There's been, you know, many outlets, the New York Times have reported on this extensively, and the Tallahassee Police Department has no answer for this. I think what's apparent uh, to us is they were interested in protecting a future star athlete, and so they did do the investigation that they needed to do. Well, uh, I think the next step here is to put in a call to the Tallahassee Police Department and ask yes. them to be on the show and perhaps give us some answers as well. And we can put those questions in writing if they would not like to actually show their faces I, I, on the show. Yeah, we, we, we shall uh, see. The Hunting Ground is a very, very important movie. And by the way, we may be talking about one horrible incident with Jameis Winston and this young girl. But you know what? Mika has daughters in college and going to college. That's why she showed uh, one of those daughters that if you have a daughter going to any college in America, you need to see the hunting ground. It's in theaters now. It's also screening at colleges and universities across the country. Call your daughter, whatever college she's at, 
tell her to watch this. And if people want to bring a screening to a particular campus, you can go to the Hunting Ground Film Dot com. That's a huntinggroundfilm.com to get more information about how you can protect your daughters on college campuses. Amy and Kirby, thank you so much for doing this. Thank, thank you. you.